Fluoride is everywhere. It's in the rocks, it's in our drinking water, it's even in the air, but is it safe? Today is a second in my series of debate videos where you guys have suggested a topic for me to investigate. Fluoride is a naturally occurring mineral that's found in rocks and that means it's sometimes found in drinking water as well. So in a lot of countries it's added to drinking water because it protects our teeth from demineralization and from plaque. Your dentist or doctor will tell you how safe fluoride is and how it'd be very difficult to overdose on toothpaste. There have been thousands of studies done which shows that adding fluoride to the diet of a population will reduce the number of cavities and fillings. If you're in one of the 24 countries which add fluoride to drinking water, and they include the UK, Ireland, Australia, Canada and the US, you probably have grown up with this and you think it's perfectly normal. However, only 5% of the world population drinks fluorinated water. It's not normal. If you look at the European Commission, they rejected this idea. 97% of Europe do not have fluorinated water. And here's a graph comparing nations which add fluoride to the drinking water to those that don't. So since the 1970s, they've all reduced levels of tooth decay, which shows that actually something else, probably toothpaste, is giving these improvements. If fluoride is so safe, then why, when I go to Amazon or if I go to the Whole Foods store, why are there so many fluoride-free toothpastes and mouthwashes available? They wouldn't exist if there wasn't a mass market for them. If you live in one of these uh, fluorinated water countries, why would you question this? I know a lot of people will just accept what the government says, you should do this, you should take this uh, vaccine, you should take this medicine, this is best for you, but I think the basis of science is to question everything. And I've found 76 studies have been carried out on just under 30,000 people, which shows there's a link between fluoride and lower IQs. And I'm gonna link all these studies below so you can take a look. So the International Association of Oral Medicine and Toxicology, which advocates against the use of fluoride in water and products, lists the following health problems which it associates with fluoride consumption. Acne, cardiovascular problems, high blood pressure, myocardial damage, diabetes, low fertility rates, early puberty, osteoarthritis. Fluoride is released into the air from refineries and metal ore, smelters, aluminium production plants, phosphate fertilizer plants, chemical production facilities. So we are potentially breathing it in as well. The Agency for Toxic Substance and Disease Registry noted existing data indicate that subsets of the population may be unusually susceptible to the toxic effects of fluoride and its compounds. This population includes the elderly, people with deficiencies of calcium, magnesium and or vitamin C and people with cardiovascular and kidney problems. Then you have PubChem which is the US National Institute of Health Chemistry database. They consider fluoride toxic and they list numerous mental health effects including learning disabilities, memory disorders and sleep disorders. Now as I mentioned if you're in one of these countries like Australia or the UK then you would not even hear this debate going on. You just assume that everything's fine and no one's talking about this but there is a debate going on about whether it's safe to add fluoride to your water or not. So what exactly is being added to your water? As I mentioned, fluoride is found naturally in rocks in its natural form, which is calcium fluoride, but that's not what is being added to drinking water. Oh no, instead of adding that nice natural stuff or even a pharmaceutical grade product, governments are doing it on the cheap and they're adding fluosilicic acid, an industrial byproduct of the phosphate fertilizer industry. It's not purified and it can also be used as a wood preserver or a disinfectant. It's very dangerous to store. If you inhale it, it will damage your lungs and it's so corrosive it can eat through concrete and glass. Sound okay? <laughs> and I briefly want to mention damage that can be done to our brain from fluoride as well. So we have a pea-sized gland called the pineal gland, which produces melatonin, which is a sleep hormone, but it's also a really major antioxidant, which protects our brain from dementia and Alzheimer's. So the pineal gland is prone to accumulating fluoride, where it's found in strikingly high concentrations. 
and this can affect melatonin production which could lead to insomnia, depression and accelerated brain ageing. My conclusion. So first of all the idea that the government is doing anything to protect your health is laughable in my view. If the government wanted to improve our health they could stop kids from be being able to buy vapes and cigarettes and alcohol. They could stop drug dealing, you know, you can buy any kind of drug you want. They could actually pay nurses a proper salary so they don't have to go on strike. I don't think that the government is really interested in making people healthier, especially when you've got so much lobbying from Big Pharma who make money off sick people. In the UK, up until last March, it was down to the regional governments as to whether they wanted to add fluoride to the drinking water or not, and many of them didn't. However, last March, the government took over the whole country as a whole and decided that fluoride would be added everywhere. When they made this change, it was done quietly. It wasn't debated. I think taxpaying citizens should have the right to consent to ingesting something which is added to their drinking water without their knowledge. I've grown up in areas which haven't had fluoride added to drinking water. I've actually never lived in an area until now where that's happened. I've only ever had one filling in my whole life. My life experience tells me that fluoride in water does not necessarily mean healthy teeth. I've never had it in my water. The other thing I want to point out is that I've suffered from really sensitive teeth. I stopped having toothpaste containing fluoride about two years ago and since then I didn't really consciously make the connection but my tooth sensitivity has completely stopped and when you go to the dentist and you say you've got sensitive teeth they give you even more fluoride to but don't panic you can distill your water so this is a water distiller which I bought on Amazon so this metal part here is essentially a kettle so you put four litres of tap water into this kettle and you plug it in and it boils the water. The water turns to steam and then it goes through the hole here in this top section, it goes into this tube, then it cools down and it turns back into liquid and drop by drop it comes out of here into your jug and it will take four or five hours to get four litres of distilled water. So anything that can't turn into steam or vapour stays in the bottom of the kettle. So anything that's toxic, anything like pesticides, hormones, steroids, antidepressants. So I add some Himalayan salt to the water just to replace some of the minerals. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any other topics you'd like me to cover, please comment below. If you've got any questions, then feel free to put them below. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And thanks for watching. Have a great day.